Hello students, so today we are going to deal with an, another new topic that is inhalation. So inhalation we can define it as it is the act of drawing in air, vapor or gas into the lungs. So we can say inhalation it is the process or it is the act of drawing in of air, vapor or gas into the lungs. Drugs are inhaled either for a local effect that is we call it as steam inhalation to relieve congestion in the respiratory tract or for a general effect. So we can say inhalation is basically that is the act of drawing of air or vapor or gas into the lungs. So drugs they are basically inhaled either for local effect that is we can say example is steam inhalation. So by taking proper steam inhalations it relieves congestion that is in the respiratory tract example inhalation of oxygen and anesthetic so we can say inhalations of oxygen and anesthetic is the example of inhalation inhalations are given either dry or moist so we can say inhalation can be given either dry or either in moist form types of inhalation there are basically two types of inhalation that is dry inhalations and moist inhalation. So we can say there are two types of inhalation that is dry and moist inhalations. Dry inhalations, so it is the inhalation of gases, fumes from volatile drugs or burning drugs. We can say dry inhalations, it is the inhalations of either gases or fumes from any volatile drugs or any burning drug that we refer to as dry inhalation. Example of dry inhalations are first is inhalations of general anesthetics that is we can say ether, chloroform, nitrous oxides etc. They are given by using a mask. So we can say first is inhalations of general anesthetics. So it's general anesthetics we can say those anesthetic that are given during operations. Okay. So we can give a, for example is ether chloroform, nitrous oxides, they are given by using a mask. Second is oxygen and carbon dioxide inhalations. So in this, these are administered by using a mask, tent or catheter. So we can say second is oxygen and carbon dioxide inhalation. That is in this, these are being administered by using either a mask, tent or catheter. Third is aerosol spray. So aerosol, it is a fine suspension of liquid or a powder that deliver medications topically into the respiratory tract. So we can say in aerosol, it is a fine suspension of a liquid that, or a powder that deliver, we can say, medications topically into the respiratory tract. That we used to say aerosol spray. So dry inhalation we can say it is the inhalation of gases fumes from any volatile drugs or burning drugs that we call it as dry inhalation and examples of dry inhalations are first the inhalations that is being given by general anesthetics second is oxygen and carbon dioxide inhalations for example oxygen and carbon dioxide inhalation they are basically given by mask tint or catheter and one more thing is there aerosol spray. So aerosol spray is it's a fine suspension of a liquid or a powder that basically deliver medications topically into the respiratory tract. So you can see this diagram. This is the example of dry inhalations. This we call it as it is meter dose inhaler. Okay. Next is moist inhalations. Now what does the word moist inhalation refers to? Breathing down and moist air produced by a vaporizer is called stream or moist inhalation. So, breathing down and moist air that is being produced by vaporizer. The best example is steam inhalation, right? When a person takes a steam, the vaporizer, the vapor that is coming from the steam inhalation, steam that is being inhaled by the person so that all the congestion that is being there in the lungs, it can get cured or it can get relieved. The person feel comfortable. 
So, breathing down and moisture produced by a vaporizer is called steam or moist inhalation. The value of steam inhalation lies chiefly in the moisture and heat. So, we can say the basically the value of the steam inhalations, they are lie in the moisture and heat. Although the medicine used are also helpful as they are acting as a respiratory antiseptic. So, we can say generally some patients they just take steam inhalations normally. They don't apply any wigs or any medications, right? So, if take if if apply or if put any medications inside the vaporizer also, it also helps in relieving that congestion. So, although the medicines they are also helpful as they act as a respiratory antiseptic. Okay, so while taking the medications also, it also helps as a respiratory antiseptic. Why it has act as a res respiratory antiseptic? Because with the help of the medications, the congestion is being cured or relieved from the lungs and the patient feels comfortable. So, this is we call it as moist inhalation. So, you can see in this picture, this is the, we can say, example of moist inhalation in which in this slide, it is being seen a bowl filled with a hot water and with a bed sheet, you are covering your entire face and then you are taking the steam inhalations, okay. So, this is one type of steam inhalation, moist inhalations. In another way, you can also use the Nelson inhaler also. Now, next is what all are the purposes of stimulations? Okay, why stimulation is required? First is to relieve the inflammations and congestion of the mucous membrane of the respiratory tract and paranasal sinuses. So, we can say first is to relieve the inflammation. Okay, inflammations, we can say any inflammation that comes in the lungs because of excess of congestion in the lungs. There is swelling inside our lungs. Okay, so to relieve that inflammations and congestions of the mucous membrane of the respiratory tract and the paranasal sinuses. Thus, to produce symptomatic relief in acute cold and sinusitis. Okay, so basically we have seen the cold and cough patients, they are having very high conditions in their lungs and because of that, they are feeling very difficult to breathe. Okay, so to relieve that inflammations and conditions, this inhalation is very much beneficial. Second is to soften thick tenacious mucus and helps its expulsion from the respiratory tract, thus to relieve cough in the bronchitis and in the post-operative cases. So, second we can say, to soften the thick and the tenacious mucus, that is, we can say the mucus, that is a cough. We call it as yellowish discolorations of the mucus, that is very thick. So, to soften the thick tenacious mucus, it also, this inhalation is also beneficial for that. Next is, to provide heat and moisture and to prevent the dryness of the mucous membrane of the lung and the upper respiratory passages following operations such as tracheostomy. So, we can say to provide heat and moisture and to prevent any dryness in the lungs. For that also, we give the inhalations, okay? So, we can say during the operations of tracheostomy, right? The patients feel something is there inside there. We can say the trachea, trachea region. So, at that also, inhalation is being provided so that heat and moisture is being provided to that region. Next is to aid in the absorptions of oxygen. Next is to release spastic conditions of the larynx and bronchi. To relieve any spastic conditions of the larynx and the bronchi. To provide antiseptic actions of the respiratory tract. Next is to provide antiseptic actions of the respiratory tract. Example is by using menthol or tincture benzoin or eucalyptus. Okay, so by using this tincture benzoin or eucalyptus in the inhalation. Okay, so the patient is very much helpful to relieve the congestion in the lungs. So these all are the purposes of inhalation. Next is what all are the drug basically used for this inhalation? First is 
tincture benzoin 5 ml per 500 milliliter of boiling water so in 500 milliliter of boiling water you can use the tincture benzoin 5 ml second drug that is you can use for the inhalation is eucalyptus that is 2 ml per 500 ml of boiling water so in 500 ml of boiling water you can just add 2 ml of eucalyptus next is methyl salicylic few drops per 500 ml of boiling water so in 500 ml of boiling water you can use this methyl salicylic few drops next is you can you can use menthol few crystal per 500 ml of boiling water so in 500 ml of boiling water you can you can use menthol few crystals next is camphor few crystals per 500 ml of boiling water so in 500 ml of boiling water you can use camphor so these are the drugs basically used for the inhalation that is tincture benzoin eucalyptus methyl salicylate menthol and camphor few drops so these all are the drugs basically used in inhalation next is what is the method of giving the steam inhalation okay so there are various methods to give the steam inhalation so you can see in this classifications we have seen the methods is being divided into first is drug method second is steam tent method third is electric steam inhaler okay so basically three methods we are basically giving for steam inhalation first is drug method second is steam tent method third is electric steam inhaler so first is drug method okay so what is happening in this drug method so in this method a nelson inhaler is used so we can say in this method we basically use nelson inhaler the type of the inhalant required and the boiling water is filled in the jug and the patient breathes a vapor. So, we can say in a jug you are filling uh, boiling water and then you are using certain medications into the it and then, uh, and then you are taking the vaporize. Okay. So, in this method basically Nelson inhaler is used and the type of inhalant required and the boiling water is filled in the jug. So, we can say in the jug itself, the boiling water is being filled and the inhalant that is being required for inhalations, it is being used in this process. Okay. And in this way, the patients, they breathe vapor. Next is at home, what they can do it. When Nelson inhaler is not available, the patient can be advised to improvise a chug. A tea kettle or a mug is filled with the boiling water and the inhalant. So, we can say in at home you can use Nelson inhaler is if, if in home if Nelson available is not available, the patient can use the jug. So, a tea kettle or a mug is being filled with boiling water and the inhaler. So, what we does basically, a tea kettle or a mug, it is being basically filled with boiling water and the inhalant. A cone is made with the cardboard paper and it is fitted over the kettle or the mug. Through a small hole made on the top of the cone, the patient breathes in the stream. So, in home, what we can do if Nelson inhaler is not there. So, in home, basically, you can use it. You can use a jug and then with the help of a cardboard, you can just cover it the four corners and you can make just a small hole so that the vapor is coming from that hole and the patient is breathing that uh, hot air that is coming from the jug. So, that process you can do in home in case if Nelson inhaler is not there. So, this was we can say drug method. So, in this picture also you can see it is the Nelson inhaler. So, in this picture it is a Nelson inhaler. From here we will be filling the water. From here we will be filling the water to the brim that is hot boiling water and then we will be closing it with this and then the heat vaporizer you will be taking from this side the person will be breathing in and then breathing out breathing in and then breathing out so this we call it as steam inhaler 
second method for inhalation is steam tent method okay so second method is steam tent method so what will be happening in steam tent method when a high concentration of stream is required a steam tent may be used there are different ways of making a tent so if we require higher concentrations of the stream okay so then for that steam tent is basically we use it and there are various ways to make a tent a quick and an easy method is to place a screen on either side of the patient's bed and stretch the blanket or sheet across them fixing them with the safety pin and forming a canopy so we can say a very quick and an easy method is to just place a screen either side of the patients and then you can stretch a blanket or a sheet across them you will be fixing them with the safety pin and then forming a canopy so in this way you can take the steam tent in your home also right so in steam tent what we used to do if we require a higher concentrations of the stream so at that at that time steam tent method is basically used now how to use a steam tent method you can usually use this uh, steam tent method by just placing a screen on either side of the patients and then you can stretch the blanket or the sheet and then you can fix them with a safety pin by forming a canopy so this is we call it as steam tent method so in this picture also you can see see this is uh, in this picture it's basically a towel is being used and a canopy is formed at that part you can see from here the inhalation is being done and the hot vapor is coming from there and the patient basically breathe in the hot vapor that is coming from the we can say the kettle or a jug whatever you are using basically for the inhalation uh wooden blankets are preferred to sheen because they absorb moisture and will not drip over the patient so basically we use the wooden blankets because they absorb the moisture fast and from that the uh, vapors it does not drip over to the patients for a child the blanket can be spread across the top of the cot so we can say if the patient is a child you can use the blanket it can be stretch across the top of the coat the stream can then be directed into the tent from the spout of a cat okay so in this method steam tent we can use in the home for inhalation care must be taken that the stove and the kettle are placed far away from the screen and the bed clothes to prevent the danger of catching fire so at most care should be taken that the stove and the kettle it it must be placed away from the screen right and also the bed clothes to be prevented from getting fire never point the spout towards the face of the patient a child should never be near enough to the steam generating apparatus to get his hand into the stream jet so make sure that a child does not touch the tip of the steam uh, inhalants or the steam jet otherwise it is very dangerous because that steam we can say the jug it is being con it contains hot boiling water so you have to prevent that water from spilling to the child so you have to take utmost care when steam jet inhalation method is used the steam may be given for 20 to 30 minutes at a time and it may be repeated every 4 hours so what is what what should be uh, make sure that the steam it is basically given for 20 to 30 minutes okay and then it is again repeated 4 hours or it may be given continuously in a special cases okay so basically doctor prescribe for steam inhalation at least 3 times a day if it is being at most condition is there so you can just take the steam inhalation for 20 to 30 minutes and then after 4 hours again repeat again take the inhalations right in special cases it is being continued tinge of benzoin water are added necessarily continuous observations is essential to avoid scalding of the 
patient so you have to make sure that continuous observations to be maintained by our part to see the patients if the hot water is not spilled on the patients or, or there is no scalding in the patients okay so this is at most an important precautions that should be taken by our nurses and also to instruct the patients when the patient is taking the inhalations in the home hot water should not be spilled it should be taken at most care so this was all regarding the steam tent inhalation next is electric steam inhaler so what does the word electric steam inhaler refers to small electric vaporizer can be used to give steam inhalations it consists of a small jar with heating element extending into the jar so we can see a small electric vaporizer is basically used for steam inhalations what it contains it contains a small jar with a heating element extending into the jar so we can say small electric vaporizer it is basically used for steam inhalations and in that basically we use small jar with the heating element it is being extending into the jar now what the jar what does the jar is filled with the jar is filled with water on the top of the jar is a removable perforated cup to which is attached a small metal spout so we can say the jar is filled with water and on the top of the jar there is a removable perforated cup which is being attached to a small metal spout cotton saturated with medication is placed inside the cup and then metal spout is fitted over the cup so we can say a cotton saturated it is being cotton that is being dipped into the medications it is being placed inside the cup and then the metal spout is fitted over the cup as the water boils the medicated stream is directed through the spout so we can say as the water boils this medicated stream it is being directed into the spout which is being inhaled by the patient so which is being inhaled by the patient so it is basically a easy and a simple procedure so we can say electric steam inhaler it is a small electric vaporizer that can be basically used for the steam inhalations it consists of a small jar with a heating element that is being extruding into the jar and the jar is filled with water on the top of the jar there is the removable perforated cup which is being attached to a small metal spout okay and then a cotton which is being saturated with medications it is being placed inside the cup and the metal spout is being filled over the cup as the water boils this being medication is being directed to the spout which is being inhaled by the patients okay so same concept is same main thing is that inhalation is being done by different methods but our main thing is that keep the heat hot water vaporizer should get inside the patient's lung to relieve the congestions to re relieve the patient facing difficulty because of that excess of congestions so you can see this is we call it as electric steamer nowadays new generation people basically they prefer the electric steamer okay they have to just attach there is one electric connection is there that has to be attached to the electric socket point and then you have to on it the jar it is to be filled with water at the this is a marking given till this point the water to be filled and then it it is being closed with this spout blue color it is a spout and then it is being rotated and it is being closed closed and this is we can say from here this when we on the electric socket point the vaporizer comes from here and it get inside their patients nose that is inhalations okay so inhalations of oxygen and we can say exhalations of carbon dioxide that is we are taking inhalations of hot vapor is from your nose okay so these are the various methods of inhalation okay so first was jug method second was steam tent method and third was electric steam inhalations now 
what will be the nursing responsibility in administration of steam inhalation what will be the nursing responsibility now that is at most an important uh, care that should be taken by a nurse first is preliminary assessment what will be the preliminary assessment check the patient's name bed number and other identifications so before giving inhalations check the patient's name its bed number and other identifications check the diagnosis and general conditions of the patients so you have to check the conditions and the diagnosis of the patients you have to cross check with the fine and what is known by you so you have to check the diagnosis and general conditions of the patient check the physician's order to see the specific precautions for the patient's movement and positioning so you have to check the physicians for any specific instructions or special instructions given by the doctors or any uh, special movement or positioning that is being uh, prescribed or advised by the doctor you have to just check with the uh, physician's order that is written in the patient's file next is assess the patient's ability for self care you have to also see whether the patient can be able to do uh, by his own the inhalation his ability to move and maintain the desired positions whether he can move or whether he can maintain certain desired position assess the level of consciousness and the ability to follow instructions so what you have to see next you have to assess the level of consciousness whether the patient is conscious or not and the ability to follow the instructions these all are the preliminary assessment that should be taken care by the nurse next is check the articles available in the patient's unit then you have to check all the articles that is available in the patient's unit okay so these all are the preliminary assessment that a nurse should be known and should do by herself first is check the patient's name bed number and identification next is check the diagnosis and general conditions of the patient next is you have to check the physician's uh, physician uh, physician's order see for any specific instructions or any positioning being advised by the doctor next is you have to assess for the patient's ability to do self care or his ability to move or maintain certain desired positions then assess the level of consciousness and the ability to do by his own certain uh, follow instructions then you have to check all the articles that are available at the patient's bedside next is preparation of the articles okay now what all are the articles required for the inhalation so first is Nelson inhaler with a mouthpiece tightly fit into the neck of the inhaler as we have previously seen in the picture we need a Nelson inhaler and in with that we need the mouthpiece that is being tightly fit into the neck of the inhaler what is the use its basic purpose is to use as a vaporizer so we can use as a vaporizer so first is Nelson inhaler with a mouth mouthpiece tightly fit into the neck of the inhaler purpose is to use as a vaporizer second is bowl or a basin large enough to hold the inhaler so we need a bowl or a basin that is large enough to hold that inhaler so its purpose is to place the inhaler safely okay next is a flannel piece or a towel we need a flannel piece or a towel to wrap around the inhaler to prevent heat loss okay so why we need a flannel uh, piece or a towel that is to wrap around the inhaler or the or to prevent heat loss fourth articles that we need is a face towel why we need a face towel to wipe the face of the patients next we required a bath blanket or a bath towel why we need a bath blanket or a bath towel to put over the patient's head and the jug to prevent loss of steam so that we can put this uh, bath blanket or bath towel over the patient's head and we can prevent the heat loss next next we need required is tincture benzoin or any other inhalant order okay so next we require is 
tincture will join or any other inhalant that is that is being ordered by the physicians to use as a respiratory antiseptic why we are basically using it to use as a respiratory antiseptic next we require a teaspoon or minimum glasses we require a teaspoon or a minimum glasses to measure the inhalant so that we can measure the inhalant eighth we articles required is gauze piece in a container that is to wrap around the mouthpiece that is we have to wrap around the mouthpiece of the inhaler we required gauze piece in a container next article that is required is cotton swab in a container we required a cotton swab in a container why to plug the spout that is we are plugging the spout we required a cotton swab in a container next we required is kidney tray and a paper bag that is to receive the waste okay so we required a kidney tray and a paper bag to receive the waste so these all are the articles we required for inhalations so again we'll repeat it first we required is nasal inhaler with a mouthpiece that is being tightly fit into the neck of the inhaler second we required is bowl or a basin third we require is a flannel piece or a towel fourth we required face towel fifth we require bath blanket sixth tincture bin join seventh teaspoon or minimum glass eighth gauze piece in a container ninth is cotton swab in a container and tenth is kidney tray and a paper bag so these are all the articles required for inhalation now how is the preparations of the patients and the environment we need a friendly environment around the patients so we have to prepare the patients as well as the environment so first explain the procedure to the patients to win his confidence and cooperation so at most an important thing is you have to explain each and every procedure to the patients to win his confidence as well as his cooperation explain the sequence of the procedure and tell him how he can take the inhalation so next thing is that you have to explain the sequence our uh, first step is that second step is that third step so you have to explain the sequence of the procedure and then you have to tell him how he can take that inhalation okay second step is make the patient to understand that he has to remain in the bed one or two hours more after the inhalations and then you have to give instructions that the patient has to remain in the same positions in the bed for one or two hours after taking the inhalations the patients cannot move the patients have to sit there after taking inhalation next point is ask the patient to go to the toilet and empty the bladder and bowel if necessary and you have to make sure that you should tell to the patients to go to the to toilet and empty the bladder for a bedridden patients offer bed pan or urinal so that he will not be disturbed during the procedure for if the patient is a bedridden patients you can ask the patients or you can give the patients the bed pan or the urinal so that the patient is not disturbed during the procedure emptying the bladder and the bowel ensures that the patient will remain on the bed for several hours after inhalation so if the patient has done empty bladder so by emptying bladder it ensures that the patient will be remain for continuously for doing that procedure for a long time because he has already emptied that bladder next point is the patient has to follow is place the patients in a fowler position with the cardiac table in in front so next thing you have you have to make sure that you should place the positions in a fowler positions and the cardiac table should be in the front if the movement are restricted place him in a side lying positions or place him in any position which is comfortable to him so if by chance movement is restricted you have to place the patients either in the side lying positions or place in any positions which is comfortable to the patients it can be fowler positions or it can be uh, sitting with a pillow in her lap next point is close the door and windows and put off the fan to prevent draught this is very much important point before doing inhalation you have to close all the windows you have to off the fan to prevent the patient from getting drought sixth point the patient has to make sure that 
place the sputum cup in a convenient place with easy reach of the patients because as during inhalations when the patients take the inhalations right the congestion is softened so uh, the congestion will be coming out from the mouth for that sputum mug is required so sputum mug should be kept we can say it should be kept at a convenient place so that the patients can take that sputum mug Seventh point is provide a face towel to the patients to wipe the sweating from the face during inhalation. Then you also have to provide face towel to the patient that is during inhalation sweating is coming so that he can wipe off that sweating during inhalation. So these all are the preliminary assessment that a nurse should make the student make the we can say the patients understand about this point. Now, next we are going to deal with the procedure. How to do the procedure? First point is measure the capacity of the inhaler with cold water. Measure the capacity when it is filled half to two third of the fill. Okay. So, what is this purpose? To determine the amount of inhaler. So, you have to measure the capacity of the inhaler with the cold water and then you also have to measure the capacity when it is filled half to the two third full. Second point is warm the inhaler by pouring a little hot water into the jug and emptying it. Next, you have to make sure that is that you have to warm the inhaler by pouring a little hot water into the jug and then emptying it. Purpose is to maintain the temperature of the water constant for a longer period. You have to maintain the temperature of the water for a longer period. Third point is Pour the required amount of inhaler, inhalant into the inhaler and fill the jug two-third with hot water. So, now what you have to do is, you have to pour the required amount of inhalant into the inhaler and then you have to fill the jug two-third with the hot water. The water should remain just below the spout. You have to make sure that the water should remain just below the spout. If the inhaler purposes, if the inhaler is filled to the brim, there is possibility of drawing water into the mouth and cause cause cat. So, the water should be filled, we can say, uh, just below the spout because otherwise it can result in scat. The patients can burn. If the spout is filled with water, it will not act as an air inlet. The patient will not get warm air. Okay. So, you have to make sure that the water should be hot so that the patients can inhale the hot vaporizer okay next point make sure that place the mouthpiece with a gauze piece and plug the spout with cotton plug also okay so you have to place the mouthpiece with a gauze piece and then you have to plug the spout with a cotton balls what it is the main purpose covering the mouthpiece with a gauze peel will prevent burns of the lips cotton ball in the spout will prevent escape of the skin okay so we can say covering the mouthpiece it will prevent the burns okay and if the if we are uh, putting the cotton balls in the spout it will prevent heat loss next point is jug with a flannel piece and a towel so in that the purpose is to insulate the jug and to prevent the heat loss six point is Place the inhaler in a basin and take it to the bedside. You have to make sure that you should place the inhaler in the basin and then you have to take it that to the bedside without losing any time because the water can get cold. Okay, so make sure that immediately you have to give that to the patients. Placing the jug in the basin reduces the chance of the burn. Seventh point is Place the apparatus conveniently in front of the patient with the spout opposite to the patient. So, next point is you have to place the apparatus conveniently in front of the patients. Okay, you have to place that apparatus in front of the patients with the spout opposite to the patients. Remove the cotton plug and discard it into paper plug. Then you have to remove the cotton plug and then you have to discard it into the paper bag. Keeping the spout opposite to the patient reduces the chance of burns. Removing the cotton plug strip to keep a patency of the spout of the air. Okay. So, this is the seventh procedure. 
Next is that you have to instruct the patient to place the lips on the mouthpiece and breathe in the vapor. After removing the lips from the mouthpiece, breathe out the air. So, you have to instruct the patients to place the mouth or on the lips on the mouthpiece and then you have to breathe the vapor. Okay. And then after removing the lips and then you have to breathe out. So, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. You have to use this two process. Alternatively, he should breathe in the steam through the nostrils. Okay. And make sure that he should breathe in through the nostrils. What is the purpose of doing that? Directing the stream through the nostril relieve the congestion of the mucous membrane of the nostril. So, we can say if the inhalation is taken from the nostrils, it will soften the mucous membrane of the nostrils. Next procedure is cover the patient's head and jug with a bath blanket or a bath towel. And then you have to cover the patient's head and with a jug and jug with a bath blanket or a bath towel. What is the purpose? To help to collect the steam around the face of the patients, thereby the concentrations of the steam will increase. Okay, so these are the procedure, we can say these are the procedure to do the inhalation. Next is after care of the articles and the unit. After doing the procedure, right, now the next part is after care of the articles and the unit. First is continue the treatment for 15 to 20 minutes or as long as the patient gets the papers. So, you have to make sure that the patients continue to do that treatment for 15 to 20 minutes or as long as the patients get that vapor. Remove the inhaler from the patient after the stated time. Wipe off the perspirations from the face. And then after doing the inhalations, you have to take the inhaler from the patient's side and then wipe off the patient's face. Why wipe off the patient's face? Because after doing inhalations, sweating will be coming inside the face of the patient. So you can wipe off with the face towel. Next is remove the backrest and the cardiac table and the next step you have to make sure that you should remove the backrest and the cardiac table. Adjust the positions of the patient in a bed, make him comfortable, tidy up the bed and then what you have to do is you have to adjust the positions of the patients in a bed and then make him comfortable and then tidy up the bed. Okay, so these are the aftercares of the articles and the unit. Next is instruct him to remain in the bed for one to two hours to prevent drought. Okay, and then you have to ask the patients to remain in the bed for one to two hours to prevent getting drought. Take the articles to the utility room. Then you have to empty the inhaler, clean it inside with spirit to remove tincture benzoin. Okay, and then you have to take those articles to the utility room. You have to empty the inhaler. You have to clean it. You have to clean the inhaler that is inside. For example, if we are using tincture benzoin, you can clean that also. Then wash it with a warm soapy water, rinse with clean water. And then what you have to do here? You have to wash it with warm soapy water and then you have to rinse with clean water. Remove the gauze covering the mouthpiece and clean the mouthpiece thoroughly. And then what we have to do is you have to remove the gauze covering the mouthpiece and then you have to clean the mouthpiece thoroughly. Boil it to prevent cross infections. All the other articles are cleaned with a warm soapy water and then clean with water. Dry and replace them in the proper place and then wash hands. So, this is the main part that is being done after care of articles. That is, you have taken all the articles to the utility room, you have emptied the inhaler, you have cleaned the inside part of the inhaler with the spirit. And we can say, uh, basically, if tincture benzoin is used, then you have to wash with warm soapy water and then you have to clean it with the water and then again you have to remove the gauze piece covering the mouthpiece and then again you have to clean it, then you have to boil it to prevent any cross infections and then you have to dry and place them in a proper uh, places and then you have to wash your hands, okay. So, these all are the after care of the articles. And next, what you have to think after washing your hands, you should record the procedure of the nurse's record with the date and time. The next thing that you have to do is you have to record that procedure in the nurse's record sheet with proper date and time. 
record the patient's response to the procedure. And what was the patient's response after taking inhalation? For example, uh, enough of mucus has come out from the patient's mouth. Okay, return to the patient to assess his comfort and to observe any untoward reactions to him. And then you also have to uh, you have to ask if any reactions has come because of taking inhalations. You have to observe the patients also. Offer hot drinks if needed. Offer also hot drinks if the patients needed it. Okay, so this was all related to inhalations. Okay, so we have dealt with what is the definitions of inhalations, what are the basic types of inhalation, there are two types, dry and moist, what are the various methods to use inhalation, that is the jerk method, steam tent method, electric steam inhalation, right? Next thing, what are the articles required for taking the steam inhalation, or how is the procedures and aftercare of the article? So this was all really, this was all about inhalation next is nebulization now what does the word nebulization refers to nebulization is a means of drug by inhalation equalizer breaks up the solution to be inhaled into fine droplets which are then suspended into a stream of gas the patients actively inhale the gas stream containing the drug so we can say nebulization it is basically a means of drug by inhalation so in which the equalizer, it just breaks up the solution to be inhaled into fine droplets, which are then, it is being suspended to a stream of gas. And then this patient, it actively, we can say, it inhales those gas, which is containing though that drug. That we call it as nebulization. So, in this picture also, you can see, this is a nebulizer. Basically, most of the patient, most of us might have used this nebulizer, right? So, this is the uh, air or vaporizer or gas that is coming off, coming from the nebulizer. Next is indications of nebulization. What are the indications for nebulizations? Okay, whose all should be uh, given with nebulization? First is delivery of bronchodilated drug. Any delivery of bronchodilated drug? Infant and children with asthma. Any infant or children suffering with asthma. Administrations of antibiotic and antifungal. Okay. Administrations of medications, antifungal or antibiotic. Then to aid expirations, local analgesia. That is, it also acts as a pain reliever. Okay. So, these all are the indications. Delivery of bronchodilated drug. Infant and children with asthma. To aid expirant act as a local analgesia and administrations of antibiotic and antifungal. So, these all are the indications of nebulization. Next is types of nebulization. What all are the types of nebulization? First is jet nebulizer. A jet nebulizer is a machine that turns certain liquid medication into a fine mist. We can say a jet nebulizer, it is the machine that basically turns certain liquid medicine into a fine mist fine mist means we can say a moisture we can say it just convert into a gaseous form that your child simply breathes in through the face mask or mouthpiece okay so jet nebulizer it basically a machine that turns certain medicines into a fine mist that basically your child or any adult it breathes through the face mask or the mouthpiece and delivers the medicine straight into the child lungs where it is needed. And then it delivered straight into the, we can say, drugs into the lungs. So, this is a picture of jet nebulizer. Okay. So, this is a mouthpiece and this is being connected. Okay. So, in this way, this jet nebulizer, it gives you the vapor, vaporizer that is a gaseous form and it is being inhaled uh, into the lungs. First was jet nebulizer, second is ultrasonic nebulizer. Now, what does ultrasonic nebulizer refers to? Ultrasonic nebulizer is a device that uses ultrasonic waves to provide medication to patients in the form of mist. Okay, so it basically uses ultrasonic waves to provide medicine to the patients in the form of mist, which is inhaled into the lung. It is commonly used for patients with respiratory diseases 
and it creates the mist by vibrating a metal plate at ultrasonic frequency okay so this is we call it as ultrasonic nebulizer so this is the picture of ultrasonic nebulizer okay next is so two type jet nebulizer and ultrasonic nebulizer next comes is what factors which basically affects nebulization so first is method of administration and method of inhalation how you are administrating the nebulizer or nebulizations and which method you are basically using for inhalation second factor is viscosity and other characteristics of the liquid aerosolized which are not the inhalant that is basically used for the inhalation that is viscosity and other characteristics of the liquid aerosolized distributions of inspired gas that is how the gas is distributed flow rate of gases okay so these are the factors which basically affects nebulization first is method of administration or method of inhalation second is viscosity and other characteristics of the liquid aerosolized third is distribution of inspired gas fourth is flow rate of gas articles required for nebulization first is nebulizer second is pressure gas source third is flow meter fourth is oxygen tubing fifth is tps tps mouthpiece or mask bp apparatus and tpr tube sputum mug try normal saline 5 ml syringe with water prescribed medication suction equipment kidney tray stethoscope so these all are the articles required for nebulization okay next is preparation of the patient and the environment okay so first is preparation of patient explain proper procedure to the patient patient should be well supported in position that is patient's position should be well supported in third is the patient breathe slowly and deeply using the lower chest the patient use we can say he should breathe slowly and deeply using the lower chest second is preparation of the unit environment should be free from draught of air so first thing and utmost thing that should be kept is environment should be free from draught of air next is bed should be comfortable bed should be comfortable so preparation of patient you have to explain proper procedure to the patients patient should be well supported position breathe slowly and deeply using the lower chest and preparation of the unit in this environment should be free of drought bed should be comfortable then nursing responsibility what all are the nursing responsibility should be taken care before giving nebulization verify the order on the patient medications check the label of the patients you have to check the label of the patients confirm patient's identity by asking his name his bed number his diagnosis his room number file number everything you have to cross check it check the gas flow and the most thing is you have to check the gas flow wash hands before the procedure very much important topic wash hands before doing the procedure explain the procedure to the patients why to win his confidence and cooperation record the patient's vital signs to record the baseline data you have to record the patient's vital signs that is the temperature pulse respirations bp to record for the baseline data procedure place the patients in a sitting or a high faller position to facilitate lung expansions and aerosol dispersion so what we have to make sure that you have to place the patients in a sitting or a high faller positions why to facilitate lung expansions and aerosol dispersion attach free end of oxygen tubing to pressurize gas source then what you have to do is you have to attach free end of the oxygen tubing to the pressurized gas source third thing is that turn on the gas source check the outflow port usually setting of 5 to 6 liter per minute is adequate and then what you have to do you have to check the gas source and then you have also have to check the outflow and then usually setting should be maintain of 5 to 6 liter per minute is adequate 
okay so gas hose should be turned on and then you have to check the outflow and then you have to set 5 to 6 milli liter per minute as etiquette instruct the patient to breathe slowly deeply and evenly through his mouth so you have to instruct the patients to breathe breathe slowly and deeply evenly through his mouth after about three deep breath he should breathe using lower chest okay so after about three deep breath he should using the lower chest also if possible remain with the patients during the treatment so if possible you have to be remain with the patients during the treatment that is at most 15 to 20 minutes then take vital signs to detect adverse reactions to any medication and then you have to uh, take vital signs to detect any adverse reactions care of the patient so this was all regarding the procedure of giving nebulization next is care of the patients make sure that the patient is comfortable provide a sputum mark for spitting the expiration so you should provide a comfortable position to the patients and you should also provide sputum mug for spitting the expiration next next point is charting and documentation that is very important part of the procedure in which you have to record the date time which medications you have given how much durations then result of the uh, therapy that is why giving after giving of nebulization what was the result does the patient spitted any expiterations what was the color of that expiterations whether it was uh, thick or whether it was soft you have to write in detail document each and every point that you have seen during the procedure any complications and nursing action taken if any complication happened or if any nursing actions you have taken from your side patient's tolerance of the treatment that is how much the patient has tolerated that procedure continuously what changes and complication and then you have to continuously watch for any changes or any complications that has happened during the procedure so in complications you can see after giving nebulization certain patients they have infections over hydration due to pulmonary edema and wheezing okay so these are the complications of nebulization infections there will be wheezing there will be over hydrations leading to pulmonary edema so this was all related to nebulization so today we have dealt with the nebulizations and inhalation part okay hope you have understood with this topic from the ancient time we use inhalation therapy included the various use of leaves from plant vapor from aromatic plant like balsam and myrrh so we can conclude it by saying in our ancient times we use very good good things to take the inhalation like uh, our uh, ancient time people they use the leaf they use the we can say uh, vapors from the aromatic plant like balsam or myrrh the large surface area of human lung along with its rich blood supply rapid onset of drug with bioavailability and other physiological advantages make it potential route for treating asthma copd and pulmonary disorder so we can say by using this nebulizations and inhalations we can so treat certain disease conditions and also we can cure the congestion that is present inside the patient's lungs due to which the patient face breathing difficulties right so this is this medications has been used in the inhalation uh, ancient times and till now also we are using it okay so hope you have understood about this inhalation and nebulization procedure thank you so much Thank you so much for listening me cooperatively.